So explain the model to me. You're actually betting that women entrepreneurs can find the next hot thing, right? Yeah, I mean, Scout investing has existed for almost over a decade now, right? Almost all of the big venture capital firms at some point in their life cycle have tried this, which is basically you take usually founders who are incredibly well connected. They've gone to top schools, they worked at top companies, but they're not personally liquid because they're struggling to you know, get their own startup scaled and they haven't taken money off the table. So they don't have liquidity, but they have access to an amazing network. And so if you fund their angel investing, you get the returns and they get the track record and experience and they can help companies really come to life. And so this has been around for a decade. It works. People have seen amazing returns from it. It's almost all men. Right. So Sequoia, mm -hmm. legendary venture capital mm -hmm. firm, has had a scout program yeah. for a long time. You were a scout mm -hmm. for Sequoia. Yeah. The vast majority of scouts at Sequoia historically have been men. In 2015, 6% of Sequoia scouts were men. Now they're saying their new class is more like 30%, 6% were women. Yeah. Now they're saying more like 30% mm -hmm. are, are, are women. So unfortunately, the way this has worked, it has sort of perpetuated the all-male mm -hmm. VC mm -hmm. network thing. Yeah. How does this help break that? By putting women in. Um, it's not just Sequoia, right? A number of big venture funds have scout networks. And from the data that I was able to sort of cobble together, because most of them are relatively um, kind of secretive, it's about 90% men which means that even if there are about 200 scouts running around the Bay Area investing in these deals, which is about the, uh, the approximate number that I've been able to find, 90% of them are men. And so when you look at what happens when you're giving men that access to capital and you're systemically not giving that to women, right, it, then you end up in seeing who gets, who's able to get in interesting deals, who's able to go on and become an investor, get board seats, make some money, and then kind of recycle it back into the ecosystem. And so women are shut out at every piece of that. And hopefully we're going to change that. Now, I feel like I need to trumpet, you know, mm -hmm. you are you know, not just a woman, you are a, a black female entrepreneur. Yes. It is very rare mm -hmm. to see, you know, black women in venture mm -hmm. capital, let mm -hmm. alone yeah. um, women. What was the fundraising environment like for you? How receptive were people to your idea and how did that make you feel about how much progress there's actually been? Yeah, I mean, raising venture capital funds is hard for everyone when you first start. That being said, you know, my $3.5 million fund, which is a very small amount of money, the second largest venture capital fund, first time fund ever raised by a black female VC in the country ever, <laughs> right? And so when you think about that, given the, the magnitude, right, there was another fund who announced today and they were like, we have a $9. billion private equity fund. I'm like, great, I have a $3.5 billion, <laughs> right? I can't even afford one month of your rent. <laughs> um, and so, so there's this huge dichotomy there and, and that is a systemic problem and that is a problem when you look at what happens to returns, the kinds of entrepreneurs you back. Um, there is a huge missing piece and, and we talk about that, I think, on the startup side and a little bit on the side of, of who's being employed by venture funds. But when you look at it, who's starting venture funds, that's another piece of the ecosystem that's just in really, really disparate shape. Women and people of color, and particularly women of color, just aren't being represented. Now, you were a critical part of Silicon Valley's Me Too movement. You spoke out about your experiences with a venture capitalist Dave, named Dave, McC Dave McClure. Um, and I know you've been really involved in the community and helping to keep the movement going since then. Do you think things have really changed in Silicon Valley? You know, I think that there's a lot more willingness to talk about the problems, mm -hmm. and that is a huge start in the right direction, but it's not enough, right? Venture capitalists, we run on capital. <laughs> so if we're not getting money, if we're not able to deploy money right into more diverse founders, I do think that that's how you really change things in our industry. And so I think it is wonderful that journalists like yourself, that people are taking these stories seriously and talking about them, but I think it's a first step. And until there are more people who look like me running funds, then I, I just think that we're going to have a long way to go. Absolutely. Um, in terms of strategy for you, how do you decide who to fund? I mean, some, uh, you know, All Raise has gotten a lot of publicity in the last year, year and a half for the efforts that they've, they've made. And I've even heard um, women entrepreneurs say it's even hard to get them to, to take me seriously. I mean, there are so few yeah. opportunities for women and people of color still. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you decide who to bet on, mm -hmm. um, you know, as you're, you're trying yeah. to sort of anoint yeah. some of the 
change makers of the future. Yeah, it, it's been awesome to see our scout group come together because they're incredibly diverse. Um, we have women of in almost every geography, Bay Area, New York, LA, Detroit, Denver, we're looking for more all over the country. Um, they're incredibly diverse racially, sexual orientation, the companies they build. I have everything from literal rocket scientists who've worked at NASA <laughs> to a former magazine editor who is a co-founder at Birchbox, right? So there's just a huge diversity in that. And so what they're able to do is they can go out and they can invest in what they're drawn to and what they love. So they don't have to sit there thinking, how do I make sure that every investment I do do is as diverse as it can be because they're all naturally drawn to different things and different people and different networks and I think that's how you get real diversity. You put a diverse group of people together and you let them go find what they're passionate about and it's going to be a diverse group. So quickly what are the hot trends? Is it all about AI? Crypto? I'm still a crypto fan, but um, you know, it, it's actually been interesting. Um, I've been hearing a lot about like ocean technology, <laughs> and I've been hearing the the shift towards things that are directly or indirectly um, going to help going to help climate change has mm -hmm. been one of the probably biggest shifts mm -hmm. over the last year or so. Um, there's been a huge push towards that, um, and I also think that there's just a lot of innovation everywhere right now, and so we're seeing interesting companies come out of every sector.